Hi guys, uh, today's video is about the much discussed topic on the mouth guards. Uh, as many questions were asked in the March exam and uh, people are confused as to what type of mouth guard should be used in what scenario. Uh, I know as basic dental graduates, we must have not made one or two or maybe less than that mouth guards. And uh, so far, uh, the basic knowledge of mouth guards that I assume all the candidates have, because these are the questions that I've been receiving, is, doctor, the questions like, uh, which is the recommended mouth guard for 15-year-old? And the options were custom-made, unilaminar, custom-made, bilaminar, custom-made, trilaminar, stock mouth guards, and boil and bite mouth guards. Which option should we use? See, to understand what the question is asking and what you have to choose, you need to know certain theory about mouth guards. Then you will be able to answer any type of question, correct? So, uh, today we will be discussing the type of mouth guards and understanding the history and geography about it. And then uh, we'll discuss the cost perspective. And then we are going to discuss uh, two, two or three questions uh, which were asked in the exam. And any more questions, if at all, the similar questions that can be asked in the exam. But you will be confident by the end of this video to answer them all. All right. So let's start. So the first type of mouth guard, uh, you can just, you know, take out and Google. Uh, you must be aware of a stock type. Stock mouth guard, okay? Stock mouth guard is what? It's already a standard size which is readily available in the market. Uh, all you have to do is just take it in your mouth and bite. Uh, you see, this is a stock mouth guard. So it doesn't have any occlusal anatomy. So basically, you're just holding on to a flat surface with your teeth and it generally kind of covers uh, your mouth area. So direct impact won't be there. But it's the most ill-fitting of types. Okay. And it may not be very comfortable for you. And it won't even stay in your mouth if you open your mouth because there is nothing to hold on to it. So that is called as a stock mouth guard. But before I proceed to the next type, I would like you all to just go through this article. You can again Google this. It's by ADA. And they have mentioned uh, here the guidelines for fabrication, use and maintenance of mouth guards. Now, why I'm showing you this article is that because when the question in ADC exam would be like, which is the best mouth guard? They are basically asking which is the ideal mouth guard. So you should know the ideal characteristics of a mouth guard. So here we are on the ideal characteristics of the mouth guard. Understood? So we have here a general principles that should be used to make the mouth guard and what they expect. So here, yeah, general design principles. You see this? So go through this. Basically, the points to be remembered is the label flange should extend to within 2 mm of the vestibular reflection. Now, why is this important? This is important and this second line also, the palatal flange should extend about 10 mm above the gingival margin and all these points. See, these points, na, the approximate material thickness and uh, the closing of the mouth, there should be even contact, etc., etc., can only be achieved if you are making a mouth guard in the lab. Understood? The ideal principles. So remember the ideal, the best mouth guard is the one which will follow all these principles and all these principles can only be achieved 100% only if you're making it in a lab, which is a custom made. So, now when I come back to the topic of the types of mouth guards, we have stock mouth guard, we have boil and bite, and we have custom made. Now, in, in boil and bite, we have trilaminar. I'll come to the laminar types. And in custom made, you have unilaminar and bilaminar. Understood? Now, stock mouth guard should never be used. So, anytime if the question is asking which is the best mouth guard, just eliminate this option. Stock mouth guard is the worst one. It should never be used. It is the least recommended one. The question can also ask you which is the least recommended of mouth guards. Choose this option. 
stock mouth guard understood clear now what is boil and bite mouth guard boil and bite mouth guard is basically that is available on amazon and stuff so you will get something like this which you will put in water in hot water there are many youtube videos available you know boil and bite just google them they'll show you that you're supposed to put it in hot water take it in your mouth and bite on it once you bite you have to wait for like 60 seconds and it would become very hard and here the impressions of your teeth would come so it is more retentive a little better than the stock mouth guard now when now in this you have two varieties one is a simple one like something like this would come you will boil and bite on it and something like this would come and the second one is tri laminar now what is laminar in the first place laminar means there is one layer and then there is a second layer so if there are two layers it's called as a bi laminar if there are three layers it's called as a tri laminar now in in one layer it's usually a softer kind of material which is like a night guard now the material they use is i'll tell you the material name also let's go to this beautiful article of tri laminar that i found so here uh, i'll go sequence wise only so you people are not confused they have given you know a diagram uh telling you all that they have the first layer and the second layer and on top is the third layer but anyways don't bother about that uh the material that they use is called as a eva liner it's something ethyl vinyl acrylic something kind of a thing now uh i'll show you a video of also the tri laminar now let's let's first talk about the uni laminar stuff in the uni laminar type uh, it's like a night guard you people have seen a night guard like right it's a very thin material which exactly adapts to your occlusal anatomy of the teeth and you can cut it the way you like so i will just type your night guard and let's go to the images yeah this 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 single layer now if i just make this single layer it's called as a night guard and i can also call it as a uni laminar mouth guard but it's really thin it's not that thick now but but this is extremely retentive as uh, it's uh, made in the lab okay custom made uni laminar understood now once i make this if i put a harder material on top of it it becomes a bi laminar one so uh there is this nice video out here of how to fabricate a bi laminar one so i have already gone through this video and at this point in time where i am starting this video already the uni laminar mouth guard is made that is the first layer is made and they are making the, the second layer the material now. should be under pressure for 2 to 2 and a half minutes evacuate the pressure from the chamber at the end of this cycle the tissue anatomy at the model base and a few millimeters behind the last tooth in the arch also cut about 5 millimeters below the gingival margins in the palate peel excess material from model enter it into the machine final 25 to 30 remove the lamp from the material a rough cut out of okay so you can go through this video of course you can take a screenshot of this so basically what they did is uh, they made the first layer like a night guard and on top of that they made this harder layer so a bi laminar mouth guard is basically a soft material which is just next to the occlusal anatomy of the teeth and covering a part of it and a very hard layer on top of it now this is the best mouth guard it's custom made it has extremely nice shock absorbing properties because uh from outside it's really thick but from inside it's thin it's thin as in it is softer so your teeth don't feel as if they are getting bitten into something very hard but at the same time from outside it's really hard because it's formed of two layers hence the name bi laminar custom made bi laminar is the best recommended mouth guard
Understood? Now you might ask why not the trilaminar? It must be even better, right? So it, it's not like that. Let's go to trilaminar. I have a nice video which I could find of trilaminar. But before that, let's go to the article of trilaminar so you can understand. So, so far what have we done is we have understood the stock mouth guard which is the least recommended type. The boil and bite mouth guard is the second least recommended as in it's still better than stock but it's not that great because still you cannot trim by yourself anything and it won't give you the exact specifications. In the boil and bite type, we have the unilaminar and we have the trilaminar. Understood? Custom made mouth guard, so far we know we can make it unilaminar and bilaminar. Bilaminar means inside it's a thin shock absorbing layer, very comfortable and from outside it's really really thick. Okay, making it the ideal kind of mouth guard. Now coming back to the boil and bite, we have the uni layer, which is like the stock only, but you can boil and bite. And now we are going to study about the trilaminar. Trilaminar, as I'm, I'm showing you the diagram, listen I mean, to this last line. This invention, basically the invention of the trilaminar, is well suited for the commercial mass production of mouth guards which are marketed through commercial channels such as the sporting goods stores and sports department. Now, this trilaminar one is not made in the lab. Okay, I will show you a picture of the trilaminar one out here. I have a nice video. Yeah, here. Neomorph is a company which is making this and there must be other companies also. Can you, can you see this? This is the first transparent layer. The blue layer is the second layer. And then there is a third transparent layer from outside. So basically, this is also a boil and bite kind of a thing. And uh, if the patient cannot come to you, see the custom made bilaminar is an expensive one because it's made by the lab and the patient has to come to you. But if you are a player who cannot afford a custom made and you are playing in some remote area or you know, there is no way you can get hang of a dentist who can make a mouth guard for you. Then this trilaminar one, which is store bought, is the best one. So depending on the scenario, you will choose your answer. So see, this is how it is. I'm just going to start this video. This smart choice. The Neomorph mouth guard is crafted with revolutionary technology to give you a custom fit for maximum protection. It forms closer than a normal boil and bite mouth guard and we can help you with achieving that. You will need a Neomorph mouth guard. Take note of the V section at the front of the guard. So basically this has three layers. There is an inner thin layer, there is a middle very thick layer and the outside thin layer again to mold it in the hot water basically. So it's the middle layer which is the hardest one. The innermost and the outermost kind of just then adheres to the middle layer to give it a form. The middle layer is a little shorter than the outside layers because it's the hardest layer and that cannot be molded at all. The only mold that can happen is of the innermost and the outermost transparent layer. So basically you are just molding the borders. There is still uh, the occlusal anatomy that comes will come but it won't be that great like a bilaminar custom made mouth guard. You understanding my point? So, so far what have we studied is the stock mouth guard which is the least recommended. The boil and bite can be single layer and it can be three layers. Single layer is not recommended. The three layered one is good, but I would give it a second priority over a custom made bilaminar mouth guard. Again, custom made unilaminar is not the recommended choice. You understand? So in the hierarchy of my options, which is the best mouth guard, it would be take a pen and pencil and a paper and write down custom made bilaminar is my first choice. Then I would go to try try laminar. Then I would go to boil and bite. Then I would go to custom made uni laminar. 
and the last one I'll go to stock one. Okay. So these five options in these hierarchy, whichever option is not present, choose the next in line. I hope this is clear. I'll just repeat the most recommended by a uh, mouth guard according to me, according to my understanding of all this, which makes a lot of sense to me. The first would be on the list is custom made by laminar because it has an inner softer layer, which is shock absorbing and the outer hard layer. And it's custom made exactly adhering to the article guidelines that I showed you by ADA. The second is the trial laminar one, uh, the store bought one. Third is boil and bite. Fourth one is custom made uni laminar because uni laminar is not strengthful at all. And the fourth one is the stock one, which is the least recommended one. Now there is another type of mouth guard which I want to share with you. It's the bimaxillary one. Okay, uh, there there was a question as to for what rugby players will wear and what is the recommended one for them. In the bimax, what happens? Uh, if you can see this diagram, it covers the entire mouth. It's a single uh, piece. It's not a dual piece like this. It's a single piece like this. Now, in that, you can see the posterior teeth are not getting covered. The anterior are not properly covered. It's just kind of something to hold on. Plus, it's very uncomfortable because you cannot talk with it. You cannot breathe with it. So, uh, I have gone to this world rugby shop itself. Uh, which has given the best recommended mouth guard for them. And they have given this uh, trial laminar one uh, because, of course, they are marketing this. But my point is that it's not a bimaxillary one. You understand? It's an individual one only, up and down one. So uh, if the patient can come to you, if the scenario mentions that the patient has come to you to make a mouth guard, which one would you recommend? Straight away the bilaminar one. Understood? Custom made. Don't even think about it. If the question mentions that uh, the patient is staying far away, cannot come to you and would like to have a mouth guard but cannot visit a dentist or something, then what would you do? Then just write a trilaminar mouth guard. So I hope now that this doubt is cleared and you will not have problem in solving any of the mouth guard related questions. Okay, never ever choose the stock or boil and bite unless they are asking you which is the least recommended one of it all. So I hope this clarifies all the mouth guard questions.